Hello! People have been asking me about what art supplies I use since the dawn of the dinosaurs. So, the time has come. Es hora de comer. So I don't always do pencil sketches for my paintings, especially if it's looser or more abstract than I just sketched with paint. But if I'm doing something more technical or precise, like a portrait, then I do sketch. I am a graphite hater. Sorry about it. I just hate how it smudges everywhere and gets the paint muddy and is also impossible to erase from canvas. So I use these Prismacolor Colorase erasable colored pencils. My favorite color is the lavender. It's not too dark or too light and also purple just makes me happy. And these are really nice because they don't make the paint gross and also they're so much easier to erase from canvas. Also these pencil extenders are so good. This pencil should have died a long time ago but instead I could still use it because of this thing. My favorite block eraser is this Faber-Castell dust free eraser. I'm a ah! I've been using it for years and it works miracles. I also have the classic Tombow Mono Zero. It's refillable and super good for erasing small details. Sometimes I think it's too small, so the one I actually use more is the Tombow Mono Knock, which is basically the same thing, it's just a size up. Made in Japan, can I just say, Japanese stationery and for sharpeners, I just use this little handheld thing. I'm trying to be a makeup artist, how do I focus this shit? Okay, there we go. I don't know what brand it is. I'm sorry that's so not helpful, but yeah, I've been using this one for many years and it works. If I need to sketch something on top of an area I've already painted, I use chalk. And if I need to do finer details, then I use this General's White Chalk Pastel Pencil. I'm a big chalk fan because it's super easy, it comes right off with water, and it's really good if you're indecisive like me and you want to see how something looks without ruining the layers that you've already painted. Welcome to my paint bin. You really do not need this many colors, so many of these I could easily mix. For example, back in 2019, I made this painting with just five colors. But the reason I have so many is because I'm literally a child and I just get excited to try new brands and new colors. <laughs> also, the way I justify it is that since acrylic dries so fast, cutting down on the mixing time by having pre-mixed colors saves so much effort and paint. Or maybe I'm just lazy and I don't want to mix my paint. Also, a lot of people ask me why I like acrylic over oil paint. And here is why. First of all, acrylic is cheaper. Second of all, acrylic dries faster and I'm impatient. Third of all, oil paint is big stinky and I have bad ventilation. So the main brand of paint I use is Arteza. They come in these go-go squeeze pouches, which is kind of weird, but I like it. <laughs> Before I tried them, I low-key thought Arteza was a scam because of the way they do their marketing. But what do you know? Arteza does not sponsor me, but I would not mind if they did. I've never seen another artist like unironically use them not as part of a sponsorship, but I gotta admit, I'm a bit of an Arteza stan. I've been using these in every painting I've made over the past like two years. They're super affordable and the pigmentation, opacity, and consistency is so much better than every other student grade acrylic paint I've tried, like Liquitex Basics and Black Studio. I'm not a professional artist, so maybe it's because I don't know art things and I like don't know what I'm talking about, but I could not tell you the difference between these and my more professional paints. I actually like the Arteza paints better than some of them. The main drawback though is the light fastness, which is basically how resistant a pigment is to fading over time after being exposed to light. I think Arteza complies with the scale of the American Standard Test Measure or ASTM. So under normal conditions, ASTM 1, which is the best rating, will last for over 100 years. But most of Arteza's paints are ASTM 3, which means they'll only last for about 15 to 50 years which is not the greatest, but how much do I really care? Here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> I probably will end up phasing these out and replacing them with artist grade paint as I use them up, especially because I'm selling my work to other people now. But for beginner or intermediate painters or people looking for affordability, I would highly recommend. Okay, next. These golden fluid acrylics are my babies. Love them so much. They have the consistency of like watered down paint, except it has the same pigment concentration, which is very nice, especially for details and for covering large areas. Sometimes I mix these with my heavy body paints and the application process is so much smoother. If you're gonna get just one bottle, get the white. 
Trust me, they are a little pricey, but even these little one ounce bottles last a long time. Unless you're doing murals or some shit. I recently got some of these Liquitex heavy body paints. I really like the colors a lot, but the consistency is like weirdly plasticky for some of them. But some of them it's like smooth and some of them are just whack. So I guess you would call it inconsistency? Also, the opacity is not great. I also have three tubes of these Amsterdam paints just because I wanted to try them, literally no other reason. They've been useful in terms of the color. Like this off-white is kind of nice for mixing other colors and like subtle variations, but the consistency is even more plasticky than the Liquitex, so it's a no from me. I got some of these Charvin paints. Wait, I definitely butchered that because it's French. Charvin. Yep. So I recently got these Charvin paints <laughs> from Jerry's Artorama because they were on sale and I had a Jerry's gift card. I do like the consistency. They're creamier than most of the other heavy bodies I've tried and they dry a lot slower, which can be a good or a bad thing depending on what you're going for. For me, I'm like not a huge fan just because I'm impatient, but it also is nice because it doesn't dry out on my palette as fast. But my main gripe is the color shift. Acrylics in general dry darker than when they're wet, but these dry a lot darker, which makes mixing the same color again a pain in the booty. I have a few of these Windsor & Newton Galleria tubes that my art teacher from school gave out as part of our quarantine art supply kits. The consistency is like in between fluid and heavy body, which I like, but they are super transparent. But I did get them for free, so no complaints here. Okay, so in conclusion, Arteza and Golden are the main hose, and everything else is side hoe. I use Mona Lisa imitation gold leaf. It's an alloy of 85% copper and 15% zinc. Wait, hold up. The back of the package says 86% copper and 15% zinc. Now, I'm no Sal Khan, but that shit don't seem right. Genuine gold leaf is expensive as frick. So for me, it is just not worth it. The main downside to using imitation gold leaf is that it tarnishes from oxidation unless you seal it. This is especially important if you're working with acrylic paint because acrylic paints and mediums contain ammonia, which accelerates the oxidation process. So I use this Mona Lisa sealer. And for the glue, I use this Mona Lisa adhesive size but it's super duper runny. It's basically like water. You hear that? ASMR. So I use the extra thick adhesive size for fine details or for picking up brush texture or if I'm working on wood panel because the normal glue seeps into the, the crevices of the wood grain and it does not get sticky. I varnish all of my paintings after they're done. I usually wait like half an hour-ish make sure that everything's dry before I do it. For oil paintings though, sometimes you have to wait months and that is why I do not oil paint. Varnish protects the painting from aging and dust and stuff and it unifies the glossiness of the surface and it also enhances the saturation, especially of the darkest areas. I've tried a bunch of different varnishes and the one I like the best is this Gamblin Gambar Gloss Varnish. Some of the pros, it's really thin, so it dries evenly without leaving brush strokes. It is completely clear. It's removable with Gamsol, which is a petroleum-based oil paint thinner that Gamblin makes. Some of the cons. It takes like two full days to completely dry, which for me is a long time. It is sticky and kind of gross when it's wet. And since it's oil-based, getting it out of your brushes and off your hands is a pain in the ass. I also used to use this Liquitex gloss varnish a lot. The pros are, it dries super fast, like usually within an hour or two. It protects against UV damage. It dries with a more solid finish than the Gambar, so it feels more protected. It's like more firm and it's water-based, so it's super easy to clean. Some of the cons, it's a little thicker, so sometimes you can see the brush strokes when it dries. It has ammonia since it's an acrylic medium, so it can tarnish gold leaf that isn't sealed properly. And that's the main reason why I stopped using it. And then finally, it looks a little, um, let's just say, uh, People liked making inappropriate comments on my TikTok when I used it. If you're gonna get the Gambar varnish, only get the gloss. I've also tried the matte and the satin and both of them are so bad. They get so cloudy and streaky and gross. Thank God it's removable because I varnished a painting with this and I had to take the whole thing off. I went through like 10 old t-shirts trying to scrub it off. Not fun. This golden satin polymer varnish was actually the first varnish that I got. It's basically empty now. It's pretty thick. So again, there's brush strokes. Also, the thing I hate about it the most is it makes you dilute it with water. 
Like, Mr. Sir, could you not have done that for me? So the main brushes I use for painting are Princeton Select Lunar Blenders. I have all the sizes, the one inch, one inch, three quarters inch, no, shit, fuck, just kidding. I really like the shape and how firm these are, but once they die, I'm probably gonna stop using them and try and replace them with something else because I recently found out that the filaments are half synthetic and half natural, which I'm guessing means hog hair. Using dead animals to make my art is not very vegan of me. I also have this Princeton Select Spotter Petite, which is completely synthetic, thank God. And I use this for small details. It's basically a round brush, except the bristles are shorter and more compact. I have this Blick Mega White Flat Brush, or at least it was white. And I use it for washes or covering large areas. Oh yeah, and this is size 50, I believe. For gold leafing, I would recommend setting aside crusty brushes that you don't care about, especially for the glue, because it does not come out. So these are my glue brushes. These have been in my house for maybe like a decade. <laughs> <laughs> and they're falling apart <laughs> like they don't even <laughs> sometimes I have to hold it like this because it just it just no <laughs> this is a brush I use for brushing the gold leaf away and then I use this big sponge brush to gather the gold leaf crumbs into my little plastic baggie and I save these for later and then I use this smaller sponge brush for sealing for varnishing I use this Gamvar varnish brush Definitely one of those marketing gimmicks that's like, buy your special brush to go with our special varnish. You know what? It worked. Okay, so for my palette, this is my pride and joy. I use this styrofoam tray. I don't know why I'm so emotionally attached to this piece of garbage. My local dump doesn't accept styrofoam for recycling, even though recycling itself is basically a PR scheme crafted by the plastic industry to increase their profits by producing more single-use plastics and pushing the burden of sustainability onto the consumer. Anyway, I save all our styrofoam trays to use this palette and they work surprisingly well. This one I've been using for the past year. I'm telling you, some food packaging is bougie, so save that shit, especially the glass jars. This little tray that I put like my pencils and shit in was a container for Baby Bella mushrooms. This is my dirty water jar that I keep my brushes in while I'm painting. This is my clean water jar that I don't contaminate. And these are my storage jars. Pickles! I don't really have one brand of canvas that I stick to and it also depends on the size, but I really like Blick Studio canvases. I usually get the traditional profile, which just means it has a three quarters inch thickness. I hate painting my edges and it's such a pain, especially the bottom, but I think it makes the piece look so much more tied together. So I forced myself to do it anyway. I ran out of my Blick Studio 24 by 36 canvases. So I got these Creative Mark canvases from Jerry's Artorama and I've tried one and I like it. Um, beefy. Motherfucker. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I also have some really large canvases that are Blick Premier, which I got on a fat sale. I would never pay full money for these because they're expensive as heck. And recently I got a bunch of these Practica Economy mini canvases. And they're pretty flimsy, but it's what I paid for. They're fine, I guess. I also have these Arteza canvas panels. This is what I use for portraits. They're nice because they don't really have edges and they're super easy to ship, but they do take a lot more layering to get the paint opaque than a normal canvas. For wood panels, I use Blick Studio. Working on wood has a very different feel to working on canvas and in a lot of ways, I actually like it better. It also is more expensive. If you couldn't tell, I'm a bit of a simp for Blick. I've been getting my art supplies there since I was like 10 years old, but I started also getting stuff from Jerry's Artorama like a couple months ago and I like them too, but I feel guilty because it feels like I'm cheating on Blick. You know what? It's a polyamorous relationship. Okay, so these next supplies, I don't really use that much anymore, but I used to a lot because back in middle school, ew, I was a colored pencil artist. Did I peak at age 12? This is the first colored pencil drawing I did in years and the last one I will be doing for years. I think I went through all five stages of grief making this, but anyway, I just thought I would share my materials in case it's helpful for anyone else. So I used both Faber-Castell Polychromos and Prismacolor colored pencils. 
Prismacolors are wax based so they're a lot softer and easier to blend and cover large areas with but they break all the time and they have this build up when you layer too much. Avery Castells are oil based so they're a lot firmer and better for fine details since they can hold a sharper point and they're better for layering since they don't have the wax build up but I don't think the colors are as vibrant as Prismacolors and they're also a lot harder to blend. Copic markers were the first fancy art supplies I got. Very near and dear to my heart. I actually won the set of 72 markers in a giveaway. So these are the chow markers. It has a brush tip and a chisel tip. I also have some of the oh frick. I also have some of the sketch markers and it's basically the same thing, same tips, except I think the sketch markers have a bigger ink capacity. Copics are alcohol-based markers, so they blend and layer a lot better than water-based markers. They also work really great as a base for layering colored pencil on top. For highlights, I use white gel pens. I have these Uniball Signo pens in two different sizes. For inking, I have classic Microns. And then for sealing colored pencil drawings, I have this Windsor & Newton Fixative. It is very stinky, so do it outside. Rubbing alcohol removes dried acrylic paint. It is like magic. Something about functioning as a solvent on the acrylic binder, I don't know chemistry. Whatever sorcery it is, it is great for erasing boo-boos and getting paint out of your clothes. It's also a delicious beverage. <laughs> Did we do it? <laughs> don't do alcoholism, kid. Honestly, better than vodka. Okay, for cleaning brushes. I truly do not know how to take proper care of my brushes, but for the past two years, I just used this silicone makeup sponge thing and dish soap, and I just went like that. <laughs> but I just got this new brush cleaner that everyone has that I'm very excited to try. For cleaning my varnish brush, I pour Gamsol into this cup and then I just put it in there and let it soak for a couple hours and then I just wipe off the excess with paper towel and finally this mini vacuum I shit you not one of the best investments I've ever made it makes working with gold leaf so much easier but what really sold me was the brand Ho Life so yeah, that is all I have for you today. I hope this was at least somewhat helpful. Like if you want, comment if you want, subscribe if you want, etc. Hold up, since my sweatshirt is green, I wanna see if I can turn myself into a green screen. You silly goose, you're so silly. Thank you for watching, I love you all.